<clears throat> Great, the decortic is in progress. So coming back to our example, we have a medium size or large size company, which has say centers in different cities and an existing employee got promoted and he is moving from one department to another department and also <clears throat> a different a city, but the same company. Now, for the person who is managing uh, uh, the department to which this employee is moving, he will have a number of tasks. So let's assume that they are not using any kind of uh, HR management software and they kind of do it manually. So what happens is, first thing is, he has to take care of the person's role change. That is pretty important. He has to get in touch with the, probably the workforce management team, get this new person's role updated. And he has to put in a date, like from this day onwards, his role has to change to this. Now, the story doesn't stop. It just actually starts. From the role change, he has to also get into changing the employee's organization, who he reports to, who his immediate manager is. and in some cases, there'll be WFM code, codes, <clears throat> uh, WFM codes for uh, employees who get promoted and a different set of codes for people who might come directly from outside. So he has to take care of the codes and uh, there will be changes in allowance. So a very simple example I can give is night shift allowance. For certain levels, the pay in night shift will be different. And if a person moves up, uh, the daily night shift allowance will be dif uh, different. So he has to take care of that uh, very much as soon as possible if the person is going to be in a night shift. Now, once that is done, now see the person is shifting to a new branch. So he also has to take uh, care of the change in place of workplace. So that means he has to get the employee access to the building and access to the section where uh, this particular team works. So, I mean, the swiping cards, the access code cards, he has to take care of that. He has to place a request for it. And he also has to make sure that he gets in touch with IT, arranges the equipment that the new employee will need. And now this is only for an employee. Now, imagine if that person is a contractor who is converted into a full-time employee. There'll be even more complexity in, involved, but let's not go there. And now let's assume that uh, this is not a captive company. They work or they are partners with other companies. So the new employee will also need access to uh, the client system. So he has uh, the person managing the new employee will have to raise a request for access on behalf of the new employee to the client. He'll have to uh, make sure that he has access to whatever uh, systems or software that he'll be working on, on the client's end. And uh, in some cases, he also might need to take care of the payroll changes. He might, if they're using some third party like AADP, he might have to reach out and uh, let them know that this person will be joining this organization unit. He has to be added and uh, also send out an email to the payroll team, things like that. Now, this is pretty normal stuff. Then it comes to tracking the employee. Like, for example, if they maintain attendance, he'll have to get this person added to the daily registry uh, so that his attendance gets counted when he logs in, logs out. And also, in certain cases, when the role changes, there might be... Uh, need for new licenses in O365. For example, if a person gets promoted from tier one to tier two, he might need a, say, larger uh, OneDrive. So he also has to raise a request for that. Now, uh, all of this is pretty standard stuff that mostly assistant managers or team leads will do. And now imagine that it has to be done for three to four people. Doing this for one person itself is quite hectic. Now imagine doing this for three to four people. Now, other thing is, there is no standard time, like uh, it only happens like in uh, uh, February and March, rest of the year, I don't have to deal with this. It can happen anytime because somebody in the team might leave and uh, a position will be open. The recruitment team will find a person internally or externally, and you have to do this all over again. Now, Imagine if there is a new contract and uh, there is a large scale hiring, like 
you hire 20 people, 50 people, 70 people. Now you have to do this for all of them. And this is just the beginning. Afterwards, you also have to take care of their induction. Now induction, depending on the organization, there might be uh, a few things like he has to go through a few uh, internal trainings uh, for compliance purposes and be done with it. Or he might have to take internal trainings and also take some client required trainings, <clears throat> especially if the client uh, has anything to do with uh, Europe. Because if the client has anything to do with Europe, uh, he will have to understand how GDPR works, general data production. So once that is done, now he has to make sure that uh, this person's reporting also starts. Like uh, there might be some uh, software or some teams who automatically generate reports of the employees and send them across to the manager. Now he has to get in touch with those teams and uh, let them know that a new person has joined and to add that person to the reporting cycle from so-and-so date. And uh, this seems to be a rather large list, but the thing is this has to be done. Now, there are cases like, uh, there might be like uh, uh, the manager is halfway through this and uh, the new employee suddenly has some emergency. He will come back after two or three days and uh, the manager says yes and uh, the new employee comes back, but some steps have been missed. So the, there is a good chance the employee will be sitting in the office without ha having access to what he needs to do in order to get his work done. It happens. I mean, try as much as possible. If you have a large team, it happens for sure. Now, now the thing is, the best part is, this is actually not the main job of a uh, assistant manager, manager or a team lead. Because the main job of the team lead manager is actually leading the account. Let's say, I mean, uh, I guess most of us are familiar that most of the times they will be managing at least uh, two or three main accounts and in some cases another two or three minor accounts. So he will be dealing with these main accounts, the clients and also this onboarding. So you can imagine this is quite hectic for the manager and there is quite a good chance of things slipping through the cracks. like. He might be able to do most of the things, but he might miss doing one thing that holds up the employee from starting his work, being productive. Now, this is just like what needs to be done. Now, the thing is without HRST, there are a number of issues. Now, let's say the main thing is data, data duplication. Uh, so before I proceed so far, Anybody has anything to say? Any questions? Well, no. Just a question. Just uh, are you sharing the screen and uh, are you in first slide? Yes, yes, I am. Second question is that so as uh, uh -huh. I mean, is it something uh, onboarding in employees? Or uh, into when when they get select and onboarding, or it is uh, the model which uh, manages end to end employee uh, life cycle into the company. Yes, you're right. So it is not just onboarding. Um, Service now prefers to call it the employee journey. So employee journey means from the moment they join the company and they're onboarding their. Uh, uh, like, for example, they might have to go on uh, maternity leave or paternity leave and those kind of major events and uh, they could get promoted, they could get transferred, they might move to a different city, they might move to a different country. So all of things, all of those things are kind of covered in uh, HRSD. One second. It means uh, from... Uh, date of joining till date yeah, of please. Joining, everything will be mm -hmm. uh, will be a part of it managed managed in exactly HRST. yes from the day he joins the company till the day he leaves the company 
is there any such other in hrsd application is there a map modules as you mentioned that you know maternity leaves are a major activities mm -hmm. so is there any modules inside hrsd application for a leave management or uh, different uh, uh, if i can say different uh, uh, uh -huh. other activities of employee as well there are any other modules to manage that I mean, I'm really quite new to this HRSD application. So that's yeah, 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 yeah. I guess you're a service node developer, right? If yes, you're talking, sir. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Sir. yeah, yeah. There are, there are. So uh, the thing is, uh, now it's not a one wholesale package HRSD that we get from service node. Uh, it, it depends on the organization's requirements. So. And the thing is, uh, most of the cases, it might be like, I need I need the main HRSD module, and I may also want to take this listening post, etc. Things like that. So, uh, there are additional features uh, that we can learn about, but it's not necessary that we'll see them in the organization because they might have gone for a different kind of package with service now. So. Okay. Yeah, I will. I, I will take you through that as well. Not to worry. So, yeah. So, you said that very uh, cleanly. The main aim of HRSD is to manage employees all the way from the day on board to the day they off board. So everything is to be taken care of. Now, as the slide says, it is to streamline organizations' HR processes uh, all the way from recruitment. And uh, it also is uh, aiming to make sure that employees will have one single place to go and get their uh, HR services taken care of. Now, let's assume that there is an organization which doesn't employ uh, HRSD. I mean, coming back to the topic, let's assume that they don't use HRSD. And continuing with the earlier example of the employee who got promoted and is moving to a different city. Now, in this case, what happens is there is no central place where they have stored all the employee data. I mean, the basic employee data might be there, uh, but the data, like, uh, let's say in the past two years, how many leaves has it taken? And what was his performance like? Now, the new manager, if he needs that data, I mean, this employee's old data, he will have to reach out to the employee's previous manager and get that data. Now, it might not sound right, but there are cases like there are different types of practices between uh, departments. In some departments, they might be tracking the leaves uh, very rigorously. Like if the person is half an hour late also, it will be marked. And in some departments, it might not be that rigorously tracked. Now, I've seen cases like, uh, personally, I've seen cases like where a person's uh, leaves were not marked for a year. So he moved on to the new department. And for us, it looks like he already has like 30 paid leaves, etc. He hasn't taken any, <laughs> any leaves, etc. So all that leave balance gets carried over, which is not really correct because uh, his leaves were not tracked by the earlier department. So these kind of mismatches happen a lot. Now, the thing is, there are other issues as well. Now, we generally have to make sure that we have the employees emergency contact. Now, the thing is, this is private information. No one would like to divulge this or make it available to everyone, right? Who is their immediate uh, family member that needs to be contacted in case of any kind of emergency? Now, what happens is if this person moves from one department to another, this data will be captured by uh, his uh, previous department. And when he moves to the new department, his new department uh, manager might open up an Excel sheet and ask him to uh, give the data. So it will be spread across different places and it will be duplication of the same data unnecessarily. Now, this is actually privileged information. And the thing is, each department might have their own way of tracking the data. Some might depend on uh, using SharePoint, SharePoint sites, and some might just want to use Excel sheets that they put in a shared drive. Now, that is not really a very secure way to store data because uh, shared drives can be locked down, shared folders can be locked down 
fine but uh, what if the person who has the rights leaves the organization so again the problem is you'll have to get in touch with the rental team the it team and get the permissions reassigned etc all of this happens it does waste at least half a day okay now thing is uh, generally companies will be going for some kind of audits right is audit or else the client might ask uh, like these are our courses compliance courses can you let us know how many of uh, your people have completed these courses okay compliance courses now if you don't use hrsd you might be relying on an excel sheet and uh, you might be going around people like asking did you complete this course and you mark it and uh, or you'll be relying on emails like uh, so many people have replied saying that I have completed this course it could be an automated email or it could be a manual email sent by the employee so you put this in excel sheet and uh, let's say you are maintaining this from a long time couple of years and you go on a long leave now the person who takes over doesn't know where this data is and unfortunately the manager needs that data so he will be lost he'll have to run around trying to find this data so now this also happens with tracking of leaves and performance so employee data is actually even though it doesn't seem like there could be a lot of it not in terabytes for sure but it is very crucial data and if you don't have a a very good way to track it it can and does cause nightmares now as you can see uh, the person who manages a team will end up preparing reports and updating data and doing a lot of housekeeping tasks instead of doing actual things that are productive and now if you have data which is spread across duplicated and not really well maintained 100% sure you will see errors coming up in it whether you like it or not you will have some errors and uh, one day you will be asked to audit it and uh, then you will be asked to correct those errors as well so this actually causes a lot of headache now this is actually scenarios that are quite common and uh, i have tried not to exaggerate anything so any questions so far no at the moment i do not have <laughs> okay so let's just have a look at the problem <clears throat> so this is just a glimpse of what an employee might need need to do okay so he might have to sign an nda form he might have issues with his it uh something is not working for him he might have to update uh like his uh, parents information so that they are covered by insurance he might need to get a corporate credit card a lot of things so uh, these are all kind of related to hr now in the old way of doing things you you know if it is something related to finance you get in touch with the finance team or the payroll team but the problem is you can't get things done only by getting in touch with just one team so you get in touch with one team they might say that uh, can you please give me this data okay so to get that data you might have to go back and get in touch with someone else very simple example you need a corporate credit card and uh, you send out an email to the payroll team saying that hey i'm traveling for this purpose uh, on this project i need a corporate credit card so very simple they'll say can you attach the manager's approval okay you get the manager's approval you go back to them and it's done okay but in some cases you might have to get in touch with two or three other departments so the thing is these are all housekeeping tasks that don't really count as productive i mean you're not doing anything that is uh, productive you are just taking care of normal things but they take up a lot of time without hrst right now i have seen cases like if you want to book a meeting room the front desk the reception might have a, a register like uh, they will have a person there uh, who will note down the time and date when someone wants to use the meeting room now 
if there is no online way to book the meeting room, you have to manually walk up to the front desk, the reception, and uh, have a look at the register and see, okay, so and so time it is blocked. I can't use the meeting room. And then you note down, then you either put a note saying that uh, for this day on so and so time, I want to use a meeting room. And then you come back or you go find another meeting room. Simple things, but time taking things. Okay, so now coming to the solution. It is HRSD, but I would just like to talk a little bit about the data model here. So HRSD has something known as a centers of excellence. Now centers of excellence is like, let's see, uh, we have a HR team, but we can't expect everyone in the HR team to be good, equally good with the recruitment, uh, uh, let's say recruitment and as well as uh, payroll, as well as uh, let's say uh, uh, compliance things. HR involves a lot of things and you can't uh, really expect everyone, every team member in the HR team to be capable of doing everything. I mean, there might be one person who is great with payroll there might be another person who is dedicated to recruitment. So a way to think of centers of excellence is that under the umbrella of uh, HR, we have small teams who are experts in certain areas of HR functions. They, they know how to get things done. They have that experience. So they work on those particular areas. So that is called centers of excellence. Now, if we get into the actual uh, mechanics of it in ServiceNow, it is like seven different tables based on the main extended from the main HR table. Let's not get into that as of now. So we have employee relations, payroll, workforce administration, IT operations, rewards, talent management, life cycle events, etc. Now there is no way we can say that these are the only ones. It's possible that service now might come up with a few other additions. But as of now, this is what we have. And uh, it's just making things easy for the employees and for the entire HR team. And of course, depending on each organization, the center of, centers of excellence might be different. Now, there is a, 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 a benefit to this organization uh, or the way of doing these things. Now, the thing is, uh, this is employee data anyway. Uh, it's already sensitive. Other thing is nobody would like to have uh, allow a, everyone in a large team to be able to view like their salary information, etc. It's okay. It's okay if a payroll team member is able to view and access your uh, say salary information, but it's not necessary for someone in the HR team who does recruitment to be able to view that information, right? I mean, your pay slips, etc. That's not required. So one of the main advantages is you can limit uh, which HR team member has access to what. So of course, payroll team will be able to see payroll, payroll and financial details. Uh, they don't need to get into other things, uh, vice versa, the same. So the thing is, data security is ensured. Right, oh? Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move. Uh, how it can be done? Sorry. How it can be done in HRSD? In HRSD, you'll have to activate a few plugins. All of those are based, extended of the main SN. Uh, there is a main base table for HR cases. All of those are extended from. Uh, there are seven different tables, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's kind of like what we have, like assignment groups in incidents and uh, say requests. A few names here and there look a little bit different, but the logic is the same. I don't have that activated in my PDI, otherwise I would have been happy to show it to you. Definitely, but, take away this make a point and go back and check it. 
Okay. Yeah, I have I'll, some. I oh sorry, please go ahead. I'll note it. I have noted it. I'll go back and check. It. Yeah, I have some excellent resources where you can get the details that you need, but you will have to end up spending a good amount of time on it. Now, if you go to now learning, the problem is HRST fundamentals is a paid course. You'll have to pay three hundred dollars. <throat> Yes. So we have some other places. Uh, I'll have the links for you. Not to worry. Now, uh, coming back to the topic, the main uh, benefits are compliance, actually. So uh, you don't need to run around when you are being audited. I mean, generally, you know, a month or beforehand that you're going to get audited. And now that will kick off a storm. What will happen is uh, you will run around trying to make sure that everything is in compliance. You might have to call up people who are on leave and ask them to complete courses which were, not, which were assigned to them. They didn't do it. Or uh, you have to... Uh, send out emails to different departments to make sure that the data is correct, the titles are changed, all of that. I mean, you you can't predict, but you'll end up with a lot of headache. So compliance is a nightmare. And then you have data management issues. It's possible, like, as I said before, you have data spread across different uh, places, SharePoint, SharedRive, OneDrive, etc. So let's say for example there is a ransomware attack on ransomware attack and that gets uh, that data is no longer accessible now that will be a major disaster let's say the data that is not accessible is leave related data you don't know uh, like this person how many leaves has he already taken and the only way that you're tracking this is let's say for example is via excel so you don't know a uh, how many leaves the person has taken, like, let's say in the past six months, he could be over the balance or he could still have balance, but you will have no way to really confirm it. And now the worst situation is if you're asked to report, make reports for your team, how well your team is doing, etc., you will not have the data. So using HRSD, you will end up cutting down a lot of confusion and in the long run, it'll uh, cost you less. And main thing is data is managed better and you will be in compliance if you manage HRSG well enough. These are the key benefits. Now, moving on. Uh, now in HRSD, there are quite a few terms, but the terms that you might hear a lot are, uh, we we'll, we'll just go through those terms. One is journey and uh, another is journey accelerator another is a journey designer but uh, as pradeep said journey is the term that service now uses for uh, the employees uh, life or life cycle through the organization and uh, it basically it is like a series of steps or tasks that an employee has to do and uh, it might be like, it's not only the employee that uh, who has to do those uh, steps, it might be in tandem with his manager. Like, uh, let's say he has to complete a course, right? And uh, so a course will get assigned to him. His task is to make sure that he has to complete the course by a certain date. That is one task that is assigned to him. Another task that gets assigned to his immediate manager, manager is to check on a certain date whether this person has completed the uh, course or not. And if he hasn't, to send out a reminder. Now, looking at the slide, it says it's uh, basically, very simply speaking, a series of steps or tasks that an employee goes through in order to complete a specific HR process. Uh, so let's take a very simple example. Uh, let's say someone becomes a father, a new father. So he wants to go on a paternity leave. So for that, he has to uh, initiate a few things. He has to send out an email. He has to inform his manager, etc. Now, instead of doing that, uh, and his leaves have to be marked as a paternity leaves. They cannot be marked as normal leaves, etc. So he has to inform his manager, he has to inform the HR, payroll, etc. Maybe those things. Now, instead of doing those things manually and maybe missing one of the things, it'll be far easier if he has access to something like a 
let's say a catalog request where he can go and submit saying that, hey, I'm a new father. I'll be going uh, on paternity leave from so-and-so date. Now, since the process is well-defined, it can trigger a message to the manager saying that, uh, hey, this person is a new father. He wants to go on paternity leave from so-and-so date. The manager can go ahead and approve it. And then HR will do what HR has to do. Payroll will do what payroll has to do. Everything is streamlined. Cuts down confusion a lot. Now, as I said, the steps may involve some from the employee, some from the manager, some from IT, and some from payroll, etc. Now, still taking the same case, for example, maternity leave, uh, since it is a little bit longer, what happens is usually the person's account will be uh, disabled for a couple of months so in this case if the person goes ahead and raises a maternity request on a certain date a task will get triggered to it saying that from this day onwards please disable this user's ad account till this day and once the person is back the account will be reactivated so there is no chance of missing out on any one of these things so that is the main benefit and this is called these steps are called a journey Right, and uh, we, if we have time, we can actually look at uh, our video. One second, let's see. Let me see. Let me. Are uh, Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, let me know if you're able to hear it as well. Are you able to get the audio? From the no, no. Ah, okay, fine, not a problem. Then we'll leave it as it is. And uh, I will, I will give the link out later. Uh, it's a short YouTube video. It uh, beautifully uh, shows how things can be done. Now, this is embedded into this deck, right? So, will this deck be shared after this uh, session? Uh, that depends on Balaji's permission. If he gives the permission, yes, I guess. Do we receive this deck? We will check I, later. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can check later. Not a problem at all. Okay. I have a query with a Zoho CRM recruit is using ServiceNo HRST. Uh, hi Satya, the thing is, there is no way I can say whether Zoho, Zoho is using ServiceNo HRST. Uh, honestly, I can't say. Because we don't have exposure. It could be that they're using their own internal thing or... Uh, I don't think Zoho will be using ServiceNow. I, I, they are, I believe, something like competitors on that. So, yeah. So, one term that we hear will be journey, and other one is journey accelerator. Now, journey accelerator very simply is nothing but like pre canned templates. Like uh, across the board, as I said, simple example, but maternity leave, it's kind of similar in. Uh, most of the organizations i mean the a few things will be a little bit different but majority of the things will be the same uh, the person will have to go and leave from so and so date etc and uh, they might want to work from home after that for a certain number of uh, months or days etc things like that so instead of building everything from the scratch you will already have a few templates there and you can modify those templates according to your organization's uh, particular needs. So templates meaning it's not just the form, it'll also have the configuration, the workflow, et cetera, all set up. So the developer doesn't have to build everything from zero. He already has a working set of things that he can use and configure it specifically for his company. Right, so, right, uh, we are just looking at a journey. I mean, so let's say we have a manager who needs to assign something 
to an employee. So all he has to do is he has to go to the employee portal and he has to look up uh, for the list of available plans or journeys that are there, pick the one that he uh, finds appropriate and assign it to the employee, right? See, uh, it's quite simple. Uh, who is this plan for? It is for this employee. What is the plan type? Uh, what is the name, etc. And he can also assign a mentor. Now, this is important. So there might be cases like some things might be very new to an employee and he, he will be benefited when uh, he is assisted by someone senior or someone who knows the process better. So another benefit is you can assign mentors who will be able to help uh, the employee. This is the manager's view and this is the employee's view. So I don't know if you're able to see it well enough, but basically, see uh, it is a journey uh, and it has different steps so let's say it says uh, once you return from leave uh, you have to do these steps once you come back from your leave you have to go through all of these steps so that you're back on board there is nothing missed okay and uh, let me see uh, i I hope you'll be able to hear the audio. Let me see if I can find a setting that does that. Share, yeah, share computer sound. Second. Trying once again. <laughs> We know while you are presenting, uh, you cannot uh, lend the sound out. Uh, we'll just give it one minute. Let's see if we can get this to play. Well and good. If not, we'll move on. Just one second, let me see if I can get this to play somehow. Sorry folks, just bear with me for a moment.
it's a pretty good video so let's please bear with me you are able to hear me right still yes yes okay so it's a pretty good video let's just give it a moment and see if we can get it to work Okay, I don't know why my internet is acting up, but one second. Okay, so I'm actually logged in. Uh, looks like it's working now. Uh, were you able to hear the audio from the video? Uh, are you able to hear the audio? Yes, oh, it's, yes. Very low. it's very low. Sorry? It's it's a very low audio. Okay. Let me try my best. But uh, no, you, can, you can post the, I mean, the link in, in chat as well. We can go over it. Sure, sure. Absolutely. I'll do that. But let's have a look at the video. So. Um, and he's landed directly into this uh, journey's page. You can see that. Yeah, now we can never do it. Um, but most importantly, right now, he sees that he has some journeys that need his attention. So he's going to jump into this one. He has a new hire named Joy. He's onboarding, and he sees that this journey is at risk, right? So let's see what, what uh, Bud needs to do here. First, he can see here that he actually can go ahead and send a, send a welcome note directly from the journey. Um, so he can actually go ahead and you know, send Roy a quick message, and there's already a template that's been provided here. I'll show you how you can set this up um, from the admin side, so you can modify it if he needs to, or you can go ahead and just send it. Awesome. So that's done, um, and he can go ahead and kind of work through his next, uh, next task he needs to complete. But I'll kind of scroll down and I'll, I'll show you kind of the core of, of the journey. So uh, this is where the life cycle event and the journey of Solidar plan come together, right? So he has all of these stages here, right? They can be coming from the life cycle event um, and or the journey of Solidar action plan down here. Um, so this is our, our new UI for that, for these journeys um, going forward. Okay. Um, he it does have one thing that's overdue, so he can click there and he can go ahead and, and open this up um, and he can you know, go ahead and complete it when it's already done. Awesome. Um, he can also go ahead and add mentors here. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Adela to be uh, Roy's mentor. Um, and so when I send that, then um, Adela would get a, a notification that she's been assigned as a mentor. She can log into her employee center and she can see this, um, this journey as well and, and modify the journey. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, edit the journey. And as a manager, uh, I want to add a new task to this journey. Um, so I can go ahead and go down here and I can start adding new tasks um, to this journey specific uh, to my team. I can bring manage task templates. Awesome. So I have you know, a specialist on my team, Julio, who you know, every new hire needs to go and kind of shadow him and what he does. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this template. Um, I can make some modifications if I want. I'm going to go ahead and add a new date. Awesome. 
and I can add that task into the journey. And when I'm done, oh, actually, I'll go down here and, and comment on a few other things. Um, we also have this recommended learning section. So this is powered by our learning course application. Um, so you can actually bring learning directly into uh, this journey, right? So I want uh, Roy to complete uh, some of these trainings that are available to me, um, and I can go ahead and add that course. Similarly, I can actually uh, see kind of how sad. <clears throat> okay. So now if you have uh, looked at the video, uh, it kind of looks like it is quite simple. Like uh, all the manager is doing is, he's assigning the few tasks that needs to be done and he is completing what he's supposed to be doing. <clears throat> But the thing is, that is actually shown for one person. Now, the power of this is actually <coughs> it, the actual power of HRSD is when you have to deal with multiple people. And imagine you have to deal with people in different cities and maybe in some cases, altogether different countries. Now, so you might be a manager for a distributed team, like the team is spread across different cities in India. And in some cases, there might be people who might be also uh, in different time zones or different countries. So if you try to do these simple things, you can do it. You can do it via email. You can do it via SharePoint, but it will absolutely waste your time as a manager. And uh, there'll be a back, lot of back and forth. And in that sending emails, calling up the person, messaging the person, you are sure to lose track of something somewhere. Now, this is what HRSD prevents. So the interface is simple and it looks like you're assigning very simple things one by one to get completed. But the thing is, when you are doing this for entire departments, like multiple people in say 20, 30 numbers, that is where you come to know how powerful it is. Now, another term that you might hear is learning core. So most of the companies have their own learning databases. They might have tie-ups with uh, uh, these third-party providers like Plural Site, et cetera. Now, uh, HRSG, what it does is it also integrates these uh, third-party learning management system providers like Udemy, Plural Site, et cetera, so that the employee doesn't have to go and log in into a different page, a different portal, or go to a third party site, log in with his uh, credentials and then complete the course and then come back to his manager and let them let his manager know that he has completed the course, etc. All that headache is taken off. Uh, he can do the course directly from within HRSG itself. <clears throat> now, uh, you can build catalogs of courses like uh, this person who is doing this role has to do uh, these uh, few internal courses as well as an external course. So in the long run, it saves a lot of compliance related headache. You can be sure that a major percentage of your team has taken the courses, the required courses. They have completed them. They have the required knowledge to get their job done. Okay, so compliance wise, you can kind of make sure that the knowledge level of your team members is somewhere on the same level. So it's not like someone hasn't taken the course and someone has taken all the courses. So there will not be a huge mismatch. And you can track it, you can report on it, and you can make sure that you can take corrective actions. This is especially a great thing for people who lead teams and who manage things okay it is, it is great i can think it is uh, it justifies uh, uh, give the justice to the employees uh, for uh, assessment so if mm -hmm. particular employee has completed or like all the trainings all the work what are the goals he sets so it's uh, if it is automates for the reviews i mean um, uh, ratings so and based on the ratings automatically if he gets the uh the, the, the promotion or the, the the salary hikes if he gets then that would be makes the justice to the employees uh, if we end up having a, a bad uh, relations with any of the manager then definitely would help him 
uh, getting a good <laughs> rank. <laughs> it's just a no, I, yeah. I mean, let's just say that it helps tracking individual metrics as well as team team metrics. Definitely. I mean. Okay. Let's say, yeah, if learning courses is considered as a metric in the organization, it helps in tracking that. Yes. So that is there. Now, a couple of other terms that will be thrown around or seen very frequently in HRSG documentation is HR profile and HR case. It's, uh, I'll try to put it in a very simple way. Now, HR profile is nothing but the employee's profile with additional confidential data which is not available or seen by everyone who doesn't have access to it. So it might have, in our Indian context, we can say that uh, it might have additional details like the employee's other number, tax number, I mean, PAN card, and uh, a few other things like their uh, educational details, etc. those things. So that is needed by HR, etc. well and good, but it's not necessary for people outside of the HR team to have access to it. So HR profile provides this particular level of uh, this thing, access. So the HR team can see the data, the employee can see the data and make some changes. Like if he wants to change who is his emergency contact, he, he only he can do it. And uh, the necessary team in the uh, HR, I mean the center of excellence, people who are assigned to that particular function will be able to see it. No one else, because it's, ideally privileged information other people don't need to have access to it or see it so that is basically hr profile hr case is i mean if you are a service or developer it's like a request okay so even here you can create uh, a catalog uh, and you can populate it by catalog uh, catalog items like uh, for example uh, you can have catalog items for uh, planned leaves. You can have catalog items for a number of things. And the employee can go ahead and select the catalog and, and they can submit it and it becomes a HR case. So you might have some, you might need information or you might need to get something done. All of it gets translated or known as a HR case. Okay. And exactly same like a normal incident or a request, it can have different kinds of uh, states. Like it depends on the organization. It could be like a work in progress. It could be pending or it could be completed, etc. And again, similar to a normal task, uh, it can have notes, comments and uh, attachments added to it. <clears throat> and uh, the whole thing is actually, if you're a service not developer, it looks kind of similar to uh, an incident or request. But if it is used correctly, it saves a lot of headache for everyone. And I think, let's see, I think we are pretty much out of time. Uh, uh, let me know if you want me to play this video. Uh, it, it's short. I guess it's four minutes or uh, we should kind of stop it here because we are one hour into the session. Since everyone is here, let me take the initiative and play the video. Just have a look. I mean, it's pretty informative. Are you able to hear it? Yes. Okay. This video provides an overview Enterprise onboarding and transitions application and a demo of an employee life cycle account managed in the employee service center. Link time codes for these topics appear in the YouTube description for this video. Many of these organizations process and begin in HR, but require actions from multiple departments, onboarding, offboarding, and everything in between, such as relocations and promotions are possible life cycle events within an employee's career in your organization. You can easily configure and manage any conditional complex process that occurs during an employee's life cycle in the enterprise onboarding and transitions application. As part of handling life cycle events, you can leverage other HR service delivery applications. For example, HR integrations allow you to request pre-hire background checks and drug screens via third-party systems. 
The Employee Service Center allows users to view, track, and complete onboarding tasks from the HR case page. Leveraging case and knowledge management functionality ensures standardized documentation, interactions, and support of employee inquiries and requests. Now let's look at one way lifecycle events might be configured for employee maternity leave. Our employee, Maria, logs into the Employee Service Center after a doctor's visit, where she receives the exciting news. A quick search from the home page renders results for all baby-related information based on her location. This knowledge base article is set up with a link to request a leave of absence. Notice that this form is configured to handle different types of leave. When setting up a life cycle event, you can repurpose forms and other items to reduce the time it takes to start using your new life cycle event. After she fills out the form and submits the request, a new case appears. Life cycle events are comprised of sets of activities. This case life cycle contains four activity sets. When we click the first activity set, we see that this set only has one activity for the manager, the request itself, and that it's complete. This life cycle event has been configured so that upon completion of one activity set, the next one is triggered. This one has two activities, which are listed as to-dos in the Employee Service Center interface. This life cycle event includes an activity requiring the employee to upload documentation. And it includes an optional activity with a link providing access to relevant information. Optional activities don't have to be completed to move forward. Upon completing these tasks, we can see that the second activity set is and the life cycle moves to the next activity set, in this case, on leave or new to do's. We fast forward a few months, and Maria is now a new mother. When she logs into the Employee Service Center, some new items appear based on her leave status within this life cycle event. A related event appears in her calendar, a video, and other resources. Let's take a closer look at a couple of the activities in this part of the leave workflow as examples of the kinds of activities you can set up for your own events. In a life cycle event, you can set up documents that need to be signed, required by any department, as activities for employees to complete. You can also set up activities for other departments to fulfill, such as ordering equipment from IT. Upon submission, this activity creates a request that the employee can track within the HR case. When Maria returns to work after her leave, the case is ready to be closed and awaiting her acceptance. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. So I guess we got the gist of how it can be done. Right, so basically, there are two ways of accessing it. I mean, from the perspective of an employee and a manager, one is you go and start the action uh, as an employee. You go to the employee service center, you pick out the particular form and you submit it and that triggers things or else it can be triggered by your manager or by a certain event like you have just onboarded <clears throat> and that will kick off a series of steps that you have to complete. So. Once we have this basic overview of what HRST does, as developers, we can dive deep and it will make sense once we are going through the documentation, once we see what exactly is the aim of HRST. So saying that, there is, I mean, one last thing, managers have a separate uh, I mean, if those are designated as managers, we'll have a small section man known as Manager Hub, and they will be able to do their uh, manager-related activities from the Employee Service Portal. Nothing, nothing major. Just wanted to highlight that as well, because we've been talking a lot about employees, but managers also have uh, a place where they can do tasks that are related to them, and. Uh, these are the learning resources. There is one article which is pretty long and it has uh, quite a few links. If and when you have time, please go through it. And there are a couple of other best sources. I would say uh, they are quite good uh, because they are related to the service law community. <clears throat> okay. Can you, can you post this in the chat? 
at least. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I will do that and uh, that's it. That's the end of the webinar. And uh, please let me know your thoughts. Thank you for the wonderful session. It's it's really very helpful and got a good insight into uh, HRST. Hey, thank you so much. And uh, 